Hey, Miss Monaghan here. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. We are at the Hamlet Castle in Elsinore. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I'm very excited. This is my first time ever being here. So, um, this is in Denmark, and it was built in the 13th century, rebuilt in the 1580s. It's the Cumberg Castle. Um, and in the 1590s, a troop of British actors came over here to look at it. Possibly Shakespeare was in it, we don't know. But, um, and there's an old history of Amlet, who rode a Viking ship to England. And we saw some of that in Hamlet. So maybe there was influence, I don't know. But either way, we're going to look at a few things today, um, talking about Hamlet's most famous soliloquy and the first lines of the play, too. So, um, first thing that I want you to think about with Hamlet, Every time you read Hamlet, you'll read it differently. At least I do. It's one of those plays, it's like looking at the clouds and what do you see? Or a Rorschach test where you look at those ink blots and it tells you who you are by um, what you see in those random shapes. Hamlet is phenomenal like that. So every time I read it, it's different because I'm different every time. I'm growing, I'm changing, so I see different things. Today we're going to focus on a few things. Um, thematically, we're going to be looking at questions of identity. But um, we're also going to be looking at the term the soliloquy, which is a speech given... Um, alone on stage oftentimes, or it's a speech um, where the person thinks that they're alone, or they um, are in their, um, being overheard or whatnot, but it's the truth. In um, literature, we have um, what's often called um, interiority, um, where it's your thoughts, the private thoughts of a person that we don't ever get to hear. In um, movies, they'll do voiceovers. In a play, it's called a soliloquy, and it's the truth. Um, we're also going to be looking at first lines. We're going to look at the first line of the play, and then we're going to skip to the most famous soliloquy. And if you think that um, authors just write a first line, whatever, uh, uh you have not been to a writing conference, my friend. I've been to lots of them, and they agonize over those first lines because it's got to set the tone, the themes, everything is in those first few lines. So we're going to look at the first few lines of Hamlet. So here we go. Um, Elsinore, a platform before the castle. So this is back. There's the castle. Um, and it's the guards are there. It's not Hamlet yet. We're, we start out with the guards and then we're going to go in. And remember, Hamlet is the prince. He's going to be the king. He has got everything going for him, but um, he has troubles too, and we'll see what those are in a second. So, Bernardo, who's there? It's the first line. Who's there? And I want you guys to think about that one. Um, it's going to go on. Francisco is going to say, Nay, answer me, stand and fold yourself. Bernardo's going to say, Long live the king. Um, and so on and so forth. But that first line is a question. Who's there? And there are so many questions in Hamlet. Oh my gosh, that's, that's a tone of questioning and um, the question of identity. And so I'm going to come back at you in a little bit, but, um, and we're going to get to the soliloquy, but that's our first introduction. Okay, and time for the most famous soliloquy probably ever given. I'm sure you've heard a bit of it, but... Um, and I'm going to not slaughter it. To be or not to be speech. Oh. Okay. To be or not to be. That is the question. Tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by sleep, to say we end the heartache, and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. To die, to sleep. To sleep perchance to dream. Hi, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come? When we have shuffled off this mortal coil, must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office and the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? But the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will, and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus, conscious, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus the native hue of resolution is sickled o'er with the pale cast of thought and enterprises of great pitch and moment. With this regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now, the fair Ophelia nymph and my in thy horizons, be all my sins remembered. Okay, so there's the speech, the very, very famous speech. Let's break it down a little bit. At the beginning, we started the play with a question, and at the most famous soliloquy point, there's again a question. 
to be or not to be? That is the question. This play is a oftentimes it's known for being a very existential play. What is the point of all this? What is, who are you? What is this? Um, to be or not to be? And do you know? And we're going to see later on in a little bit. It's like we have the choice to 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 die, to sleep, for chance to dream. This is, you know, in some ways a suicide, but it's also more than that. Um, you know, do we want to be? Do you want to be? Do you want to pile out? Do you want to really live? Do you want to sort of live? Do you not want to live? Um, to t and I love this image that comes up. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. And this is someone who knew outrageous fortune. He was going to take over this huge castle. Look at that thing. He was going to have access to all of it. But sort of, I mean, it's a hard life being the king. There are always people trying to take you down. And the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, we, no one escapes these slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or slings and arrows in life. And I hate those stupid commercials that make you think that um, life is supposed to just be fun and games and all of that. It is not. There are slings and arrows coming at you at all times. And, um, you know, the sea of trouble, take arms against a sea of troubles. Can you imagine someone taking arms, holding a sword up in a sea with the waves crashing over him, trying to battle that ocean? Can't battle the ocean, the sea of troubles. Um, but yet we keep fighting. We keep living this life where we fight and fight and fight, and it's hard, and it aches. And Hamlet knew that. His dad had just died. His mom was... Um, had married very fast. His uncle, were, were they sleeping together before? We don't know. There's a lot of talk of him being obsessed with their um, their bedroom and all of that sort of thing. Um, and so he knew that it was hard. And then his dad comes to him in the form of a ghost or something haunts him, telling him that maybe the uncle killed him off. Like, is he going to avenge his dad? This is a hard life. Even if you have the king's castle, you know, even if you're heir to this fortune, it's still hard. It doesn't make it easy for anyone, this life. Um, and we come under, and he keeps going, and he says, To sleep, perchance to dream, I there's the rum. For in that sleep of death what dreams may come. And he goes on, and he talks about why, um, why would we choose to live this life? Um, why would fartles bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life? And he says that the reason that we choose to keep going through all of this sloshing hard stuff is, um, but that the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose born no traveler returns, you know, we don't know what happens after you die. No one's come back from it. Like, maybe a few say, and, you know, whatever. On, they show up on Oprah. But for the most part, we don't know what happens. Um, no traveler returns. It puzzles the will. And he says that because we don't know, we bear those ills we have, the problems we have, then fly to others we know not of. He doesn't, you know, he knows that, doubtful that it's going to be um, just paradise when you pass on. There's probably going to be hard times then, too. Um, conscience does make cowards of us all. This awareness makes cowards of us all that we don't know what's going on. And we, we choose the um, ills that we have instead of the ones we don't know. Personally, um, for those of you who are in this place where you're thinking that life is just too hard to go on, maybe your dad has died and your mom has married your uncle really fast and it's bothering you and people are coming after your crown and all of this, or maybe it's a lesser problem or maybe it's a, a greater one. Why do you choose to stay in the game? Um, I think for me, it's very different than for Hamlet. I, I don't know that um, the conscious does make cowards of us all. I think that for me, it's um, what's around the corner next. You never know because as awful and hard as life can be, it can also be amazing. Um, there are such beautiful moments that may just show up in a day or two. Um, and so for those of you struggling with this at this time, and hopefully it's not many of you, but studies show it's, I don't know what percent, 10% or something of you teenagers, um, you know, get some help, talk to someone. I'm here if you're my student. Um, there's, um, turn on some Florence and the Machine and dance around or eat some chocolate. Those are mine. You can find your own things. Hit a baseball. But, um, anyway, we have, um, Hamlet sitting there, um, who, um, asking that question of identity. Why bother? Who am I? And the play ends with them defining Hamlet. Um, and I'm going to make you read the play to figure out what that is. But who are you? Um, the play begins. Who's there? Who's there? 